The Swedish island of Gotland is the largest of the Baltic Sea islands with an area of 2,994 square kilometers. Compared with Saaremaa, 2,673 square kilometers. Öland, 1,347 square kilometers. And Bornholm, 588 square kilometers. There are only 57,600 inhabitants of Gotland, but the island is visited by several hundred thousand tourists every year, aiming to explore the local landscapes and interesting geological sites. Gotland is renowned for its beautiful scenery, especially along the coast where diverse beaches attract numerous tourists in the summertime. There is also a rich cultural heritage with numerous ancient monuments and close to 100 impressive churches throughout the island. The largest town, Visby, was a prominent trading town of the Hanseatic League in the 13th and 14th centuries, and this importance is reflected in its rich architectural heritage. The magnificent town wall and some 200 well-preserved medieval buildings of Visby are particular attractions. Apart from these numerous cultural heritage sites, Gotland has many rich natural features that make it different from other regions of Sweden. These are particularly related to the limestone bedrock that forms the core of the island. All this mainly carbonate bedrock of Gotland was deposited during the Silurian period of geological time that extended for almost 30 million years from about 444 to 416 million years ago. The major rock divisions mapped on Gotland reflect the deposition of different sediments in shallow sea environments through a period of some 10 million years, between about 430 and 420 million years ago. Since all the strata dip about two degrees southeastwards on the island, the oldest rocks can be seen in the northwestern part and the youngest ones in the southeast of Gotland. The whole sedimentary rock sequence has been divided into 13 lithostratigraphic units, starting with the lower Visby formation as the oldest one, Högklint formation, Tofta formation, Hangvar formation, Slita group, Fröjel and Halla formations, Klinteberg formation, Hemse group, Ecke formation, Burgsvik formation, Hamra formation. The youngest beds exposed on Gotland are reef facies limestone of the Sundra formation that can be explored on coast cliffs at the southernmost tip of the island. These sedimentary rock units on Gotland are mainly represented by reef limestones, stratified limestones, and marlstones, while sandstones or siltstones also occasionally occur. The entire succession is essentially uninterrupted and about 500 meters thick. Beneath the Silurian beds, drilling has revealed older sediments of Ordovician limestone, Cambrian shale and sandstone, as well as Precambrian layers resting on the crystalline basement 700 to 1,000 meters beneath the ground surface. The landscape of Gotland can be roughly divided into three limestone areas with marlstone areas in between. These limestone areas are often topped by numerous reef bodies as can be seen on the lithofacies map and in the cross section. The hard, well-cemented reef limestones have been eroded into various complex shapes that either stick out of the sea or out of the ground in numerous localities along the coast. These scenic formations are known as rauks, which is a Swedish term for sea stacks. We will now be exploring these fascinating rock formations, starting with the most visited sea stacks on northern Faro. Okay, my name is Mike Bassett. 
and I'm standing here on the north end of Fora, the northern island of Gotland. And in front of us we can see a very distinctive pattern of rocks. These are the famous rocks of Gotland and these are the northernmost point where we see rocks. They're eroded remnants of fossil reefs or the stacks around fossil reefs. Why are they eroded away? Because over millions of years, although these rocks themselves are 200 to 300 million years old, they've been eroded in fairly modern times. They've been eroded by the sea, they've been eroded by weather, by rain, by wind, and they've been eroded by ice during the Ice Age. And we're left here simply with a series of stacks that once formed the core of a reef, a fossil reef, as we see in the Caribbean today. Another locality with magnificent rocks on Faro is Gamlaham, on the island's western coast. Here visitors can see a large sea stack with an unusual shape and which is variously named either as a dog, coffee pot, or St. Owl's Gate. The tallest rock on Gotland is known as Jungfrun, maiden in English, and it stands a few hundred meters northwest of the small harbor Likersham in northwest Gotland. This sea stack is 11 and a half meters tall and stands on the cliff edge, 26 meters above sea level. The name of this rock derives from the tragic tale of the maiden, Ullagard, and her beloved. A large set of sea stacks is exposed at Lergrav in northeastern Gotland. Here, one of Gotland's most remarkable sea stacks, the majestic arc-shaped Lergravsporten, rises from the hill slope overlooking Lergravsviken Bay. The Folkhammer Raukfield is located just north of the village of Lugarn on Gotland's eastern coast. Here, the sea stacks of most peculiar shapes, carved out from the surrounding limestone, have formed a very specific natural environment where even wedding ceremonies can take place. A remarkable large sea stack area is also situated at Holmhallar on the southeastern coast of Gotland. When Carl Linnaeus came to Gotland on his famous journey in July 1841, uh, he of course made lots of comments and interpretations about the botany and the, the zoology, the animals and the plants that he saw on the island. But he was also deeply interested in the landscape itself and in the geology of the island. And at this particular locality, uh, at Holmheller, on the southern tip of Gotland, he made numerous interpretations. He became acutely aware that he was looking at evidence of different sea levels on the island. From part of Gotland, he described beach ridges that showed different levels of sea through time. But here at Holmheller, he was particularly interested in these great pillars of rock that he called rauks. In English language, we call them sea stacks. And Linnaeus realized that what he was looking at were the eroded remnants, the worn away remnants of earlier rock formations. And these rauks are split into huge pillars, wonderful, wonderful shapes, isolated by erosion by the sea. And this particular one behind us here at Holmheller fascinated him very clearly. And you'll find in his journal, in his diary, that he had described and illustrated this particular rock. It was an amazing feat of interpretation at that time to use these geological structures, these wonderful rock pillars, to realize that sea level had changed at different times. And it was one of the major things that Linnaeus did in his journal in recording the geology of this island. Actually, no visitor of Gotland should miss these masterpieces of nature. Dramatic stone pillars carved out from the limestone by the action of the wind and the waves. 
Strolling among these stone giants on a seashore is an experience you will never forget. Other types of scenery, equally fascinating for those interested in nature, are picturesque coastlines with steep cliffs. The cliff coasts are unusual features in the Swedish mainland landscape, but are common on Gotland. Those along the western and northwestern coast of the island are particularly well developed, where their height may reach up to 50 meters. Here we're on the northwest coast of Gotland, just down the coast from the little village of Ereviken. And this coastline is possibly the most spectacular that we see on the whole of the island. And it's spectacular because it's made up of very large reefs. You can see in the cliffs to my right and in front of me, huge, unbedded, massive structures that are made up entirely of corals and stromatoporoids and sea lilies, many, many animals binding together. They're bound together by carbonate cement to build massive, unbedded structures. In between the reefs, you'll see the bedded sediment forming the flat sea floor. It's probably important to emphasize that Reefs like this, these great patch reefs as we call them on Gotland, are not at all similar to reefs like the Great Barrier Reef of Australia. The Great Barrier Reef is a single structure running all the way around the coast of Australia. These reefs formed as separate patches on the sea floor. As I said, they're made up of massive, massive skeletons of, of fossils, all bound together by sediment and carbonate cement, and in between, are the quieter water areas with a flat bottom and much calmer environment. And these are particularly uh, prominent here on this part of Gotland, uh, spreading all the way back down to, to Visby and just beyond to Corpclint. Next, we will move to the magnificent Hoogklint cliff, south of Visby. This is a place that will be visited by almost every nature tourist coming to Gotland. We are here on Hoogklint, a high cliff just to the south of the capital city of Gotland, Visby, which you can see behind me. Not only is this place geologically important, but it's a very favorite place for tourists. Most tourists, I guess, who come to Visby come down to Hoogklint within the first day or so to look at the views along the coast. The view behind me to the north takes you straight to Visby itself. You can see the ferries in the port, and this is the main entrance point to the island of Gotland. The low cliffs across to the, across in front of me are important, but why is Hoogklint itself such a popular point for tourists to come to? Hoogklint means, in English, high cliff. It's 41 meters above sea level and gives some of the best views of all of the coast of this part of Gotland. Why is Hoogklint here? Why is it such a high point? Why does it give such magnificent views? The answer is in the geology of this point. Hoogklint itself is an ancient coral reef, a solid fossil coral reef, 200 to 300 million years old. And it's formed in the rocks below us here of solid coral that stand proud above the, the seabed and quite different from the laminated, the layered rocks you can see in the distance. The magnificent coastal cliff sceneries, coupled with marvelous sea stacks, are the major features of the local geological heritage to be enjoyed by nature tourists. But there are numerous other historical and cultural heritage sites related to geology. The large stone ship cairns at Gonarva in western Gotland and at Galrum on the eastern coast, as well as the numerous churches built from local stone, which exhibit highly elaborated stone carvings, such as can be seen at Lao Church. For nature lovers, the small islands of Stora Corso and Lilla Corso off Gotland's western coast are day excursions of supreme beauty.
These islands are a heaven for many seabirds and draw bird watchers from all over Europe. The hard to reach limestone cliffs bordering both islands offer secure nesting sites for many seabirds. The wide seashore meadows in eastern Gotland provide another common habitat for numerous species of waterfowl. For example, the vast coastal grasslands on Nersholm and Cape is a renowned hatching site for a large number of geese. As you have seen, this video film was just a short glimpse of the geology of Gotland and about its wonderful scenery. So next summer, be prepared to explore this excellent geotourism destination the Pearl of the Baltic Sea on your own.